Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Thomas Park. Welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the top 15 asynchronous turn-based multiplayer games that are cross-platform available on iOS and Android. So guys, why would you want to play these games? Well, if you're like me and you're quite busy, you might not have time for normal real-time based games. And by that I mean asynchronous games are games that you can make a turn, kind of end your turn, and then maybe an hour or two later your friend is you know on break and they decide to make a turn once they're done with their turn it will send a notification to your phone and then you can make your next turn so these kind of games are very easy to play over you know a couple days or a week or two they're very good games for adults who are too busy to play kind of real-time games but a lot of these games are actually quite fun in terms of the strategy they offer and just the overall kind of feel of these kind of games is quite interesting and a little bit differently paced than normal kind of real time games. Almost every single one of these games on this list is not pay to win at all. Uh, most of them are actually free to play and the ones that do have purchases I think are very fair. So guys, let's get onto the list. Hey guys, just a reminder to check out vpntierlist.com. It's a collection of all my ratings on the channel and you're gonna find lots of helpful information here on how to choose a VPN. Anyways, back to the video. First up on the list is going to be the Battle of Polytopia. Now, if you're not a stranger to asynchronous multiplayer uh, kind of RTS kind of strategy games, then you probably know about Polytopia already. But if you don't, I really encourage you to check this one out. It's a very minimalistic designed game, both in terms of the gameplay and the low poly art style. However, that doesn't mean it's not incredibly fun. You take turns moving across the map, um, moving your units in strategic positions, you have upgrades to play with, you have terrain to cover, and getting four friends and playing this you know, over the course of a week or two is really a good time. It's a little bit like Civilization, but distilled down into the core elements of kind of the strategy, taking over the map and conquering your opponents. Now, it'll, it does cost $1 to access the multiplayer component because you have to purchase one of the um, available races, but I don't think that's too bad of a price for entry. The game is not pay to win at all. There really isn't anything to pay to give you an advantage, and it's just a core good experience and that's one reason why it's one of the most popular games in this genre. Subterfuge is another very interesting game. However, while Polytopia is so popular and you know fun to play because it's accessibility but it still has complexity, maybe you could say that Polytopia is easy to play but hard to master. Subterfuge feels hard to play and hard to master. However, this game might provide more depth and complexity. Um, basically, what is the game? Well, you're kind of like submarines kind of going around conquering different uh, kind of players. Um, it's a game all about diplomacy and strategy. You can communicate with your friends IRL, coordinate with them, issue orders, and really influence how the game unfolds. Uh, make no mistake though, this game definitely has a learning curve, learning how the different specialists work as well as you know where to go at what time as well as just learning the systems but the game does has a decent tutorial and it should be a really fun game to keep you busy for a while if you can get your friends to play it with you and if you could kind of learn how to play it. Tusuro the game of the path is another really fun game now this one is definitely more simple than all the ones I've mentioned already but nevertheless it is quite fun and good for ink synchronous multiplayer play Basically, the way the game works is that you're trying to kind of create mazes and never get pushed off the board. You could kind of mess up your opponents by leading them different ways and left different trails. Um, it's quite simple, but it can be very fun. And the simplistic art style and kind of simplistic game design it makes it pretty addicting and very easy to pick up for really anyone who wants, a, you know, kind of a more starter kind of game um, that still has strategy, but none of the learning curve. It does cost five bucks to buy, but I think it is worth it since it is very low, you know, entry in terms of the skill level, but it is still quite fun. Uni War is kind of like that classic turn-based kind of character driven game, but you're using units here. So it's not really like Fire Emblem in the sense of that, but more in how the game plays out. Um, this game has been really good rated in the past, um, but it's not so popular anymore, but still allows pretty interesting play, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4. There's a lot of user created maps to choose from, and it, it has pretty good competitive play here. 
the units are really what you're gonna have to focus on and the way they interact and, and fight and stuff like that overall it's a pretty good game and the art style is interesting kind of like you know space marines fighting aliens and stuff like that um this is definitely a solid pickup ascension is the first card game on this list but it has a lot of merit to it um unlike a collectible card game ascension is different because it's more about deck building everyone has access to the same cards ascension is really cool though because it was actually designed by some of the people who won magic the gathering tournaments so the people who designed the game know what they're doing um, the game has a really unique kind of art style kind of simplistic old school and it plays really well and it's good for multiplayer play and it's been around for quite a while and still keeps chugging along so if you want to try a deck building card game this is definitely a solid pickup. Age of Conquest 4 is like if you took Polytopia, injected it with steroids, put some glasses on it, and increased its IQ to 200. Now this game is by no means easier to pick up, but it certainly has the depth and complexity to learn over time and give it a lot of strategic value. Um, it's a turn-based strategy game at its heart. There's a lot of maps to choose from. There's plenty of multiplayer options, even including hot state play and, you know, asynchronous play. Um, you could choose from different empires, Roman Empire, Carthage, Persia, Celts, Inca, and others. Um, there's a lot of achievements. It has pretty good music, and it's just a lot of fun if you're willing to give it some time and patience. This game sort of plays like Civilization, so if, it's that, if that sounds good to you, definitely pick this one up as well. Anti-Hero is another really fun um, turn-based strategy game. Uh, basically, what you're going to be doing is kind of fighting other kind of cool characters. I really like the art style and the music for this one. Um, basically, what you're going to do is kind of try to take over the city, infiltrate businesses, sneak into estates, set traps, and steal things. You can kind of explore and reveal the map and people as you go along. You can upgrade your guild, recruit student urchins, hire thugs, start a gang. Um, it's kind of like a little miniature board game combined with, um, um, you know, turn-based strategy. Overall, the art style and even the gameplay mechanics make this one really unique and fun to play, although it is going to be five bucks. Star Realms is another deck building card game, which means you're not going to have to collect cards. Um, it's going to be space oriented this time, and it's pretty fun. Basically, you're kind of getting spaceships and using guns and different weapons to, you know, take down your opponent. Um, it's a pretty strategic game, that's for sure, and it definitely has a little bit of a learning curve. But the tutorial is pretty good, and the overall visual style is also very strong. If you want a deck building game with more of a space theme, uh, this could be a definitely a good pickup, and it's also free. Outwitters is pretty similar to Uniwarm, but definitely with a newer coat of paint. It has one-on-one, two-on-two, -on -one, two -on -two, asynchronous multiplayer. There's even matchmaking and leagues and stuff like that, so it definitely has that competitive element. There's four races to choose from, and it's mostly kind of about turn-based, kind of units attacking each other with different strengths and the strategy in placing them in certain places. Um, I do like the art style on this one, and it's pretty easy to get into, so... I recommend checking it out. Land Rule Strategy vs. Risk is a pretty simple strategy game similar to Risk. Um, but the thing I like about this game is that for one it's free and it's also very easy on the eyes and pretty easy to pick up. Some games like Risk can feel intimidating but something about this game just didn't really ever feel that intimidating to me. Um, there's a lot of maps to choose from and you can play this strategy game against other players in the asynchronous multiplayer or hot seat multiplayer on one device. It's it's pretty simple to play, but there is good depth in it, and it's pretty similar to Risk. If that's a game you like, you're probably definitely gonna like this adaptation. Through the Ages is definitely one of the more popular kind of board game adaptations on this list, although it is a good strategy game for sure. Um, it's kind of rated as one of the greatest board games of all time. You could like, There's lots of cards to play here and many ways to win. The main kind of component of this game is managing your resources. Uh, the game has a really good tutorial and you can also fight against the computer and stuff like that. Um, it's pretty much the same rules as the board game. So if you've ever played through the ages, um, it's a really good adaptation. Um, basically the main idea is you start with a small tribe, you expand your farms and mines, lay down the groundwork for you know better advancement, uh, governments and you know wonders and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of like a game if Civilization was made into a, a kind of like a card game resource game if that makes sense. 
Overall though, it's a definite good one to check out if you want something that feels more like, you know, that traditional kind of board game feel. Galaxy Trucker is an interesting strategy game because it's almost like you're building a spaceship, but tile by tile. Uh, basically what you'll be doing is using your tiles to work together to dodge meteors, fight off bad guys, and be the trucker with the most credits at the end of the game. This one sort of has a little bit of a kitty art style, but don't mistake that for not having any depth or complexity, because this one certainly does. Uh, it's another adaptation of a award-winning board game, so that means it's definitely got a solid foundation, and it's also got very good reviews. So I really encourage you to check this one out if you want another kind of space theme um, strategy game. Runatima is another kind of strategy board game. This one's like almost like a miniature sort of chess, um, kind of with that Asian theme. Uh, basically, each opponent has four warriors and one elder at their disposal. The objective is quite simple. Um, you're just supposed to win the battle by capturing your opponent's elder or taking their place in the temple arch. The game gets more complex, though, because you have different cards and stuff like that. Um, and the cards are drawn at random and shared between the players. Um, so, and each card responds to a specific move that you have to follow. So it's, it's kind of a little bit complicated, but also simple at the same time, which means that it does translate well to mobile gaming. And of course it has asynchronous play. And if you're kind of a fan of this Asian kind of more Japanese theme here, I think this is a good one to pick up. Or if you just kind of want a more simple version of chess or something like that with kind of like this unique board game element, this could be a good one to check out and play. If you're a fan of word games, Word Base is a great game to pick up. Uh, it has a very good interface, and it's kind of like a mix between like word searches and crossword puzzles. Um, it's a pretty interesting game, and a, definitely a good mix-up from the traditional uh, kind of Grabble kind of games. This one is, like I said, a kind of crossword puzzle, brain teaser, logic game. Um, but I haven't really heard too many people talking about it, and I've tried it out a couple times, and I think it's pretty fun especially if you like these word search kind of games. It's definitely kind of an interesting twist. Um, I think it's a, definitely a good one to check out. Compulsive is a very strongly designed game with very simplistic elements, but it is pretty fun. as has asynchronous multiplayer, and basically what this game kind of plays like is something like Bejeweled. Uh, you know, you're pulling kind of tiles to match an element of four. It kind of reminds me of like Puzzle Fighter combined with something like Bejeweled. It's a lot more simple than a lot of games on this list. Um, but also easier to learn and get into. Almost not so much of a strategy game, but it does have strategy elements. It's definitely more of a puzzle game, uh, but I put it on this list because it does a pretty strong multiplayer and it's very easy to pick up and play throughout the day. Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, normally on the channel, I cover mostly VPN news and reviews. If you like this video and want to see more like it, let me know down in the comments down below and I'll see you again very soon.